Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, we're going to compare three different noise reduction applications to one another. The three different applications we're going to be comparing are Topaz Labs to Noise AI, DxO's Pure Raw 2, and on one's no noise AI. Which one is best? For this comparison, we're going to use the same image in each of those three applications. It's this image of the Eagle. It was taken with an ISO of 12,800. There is a considerable amount of noise in this image. No processing has been done on this RAW file at all. We're going to be using all three applications as standalone applications because each of them claims that they work best when they're used as standalone applications. So that's the way we're going to do it. So I'm going to close this down and let's just pick one first. Let's do Denoise AI first. So I'm going to load that image of the Eagle into this uh, application. It's right here. It's a Nikon RAW file and we'll open it up here. Now I'm going to move the navigation window over something a little more significant in the image the eye beak of the eagle, and we could see the background as well. Now, um, for those of you familiar with Denoise AI, you know that there are five different AI models, and I'm in what's called comparison view, where I could view four of those AI models at the same time. On the top left-hand side, I have the standard AI model, and I have it set to auto. When it's set to auto, Denoise will look at the image and uh, move the remove noise slider and the enhance sharpness slider to um, the amounts that it feels would be best for this specific image. And as you look at the standard um, AI model on auto, you could see that there still is a bit of noise and there's still a little bit of color noise in there as well. So I'm going to go down here to the post processing section, which is not involved in any auto setting. And I'm going to take the color noise reduction, I'll move that up to like 30 and it re-renders, and it's still a little bit of color noise there, but not as much, but there is a lot of luminance noise still. We'll go over to clear. I have clear set to auto as well, and that looks to be better than standard on auto. Then in the lower left, I have low light mode, and low light mode um, isn't as good as clear in my opinion. There's still a tiny bit of noise, uh, but um, it is better than standard. And then severe noise, um, again, on auto, we'll do, again, move that color noise reduction because this one looks pretty good, actually. And um, between this one and clear look to be the best, although there seems to be a little bit more detail in severe noise. But there is a fifth AI model, and that is the raw AI model, and this is a raw file. So let's replace the standard model with the raw model to do that. Make the standard model active by clicking on it. You can tell it's active because there's a little blue rectangle in the lower left-hand corner, and it's active over here. Just over here, just click on RAW, and it will swap out that standard model with the RAW model. And actually, that one looks really good. There's a lot of detail, and there's really it got rid of the color noise without color noise reduction being on at all. I will put it on nonetheless to the same setting I had the other ones on, 30. And I think actually that is the best. Now, typically what I would do then is I would go to a single view mode with this raw now because I determined with all five AI models set to auto that trying to compare apples to apples all set on auto that the raw uh, AI model was the best of the five. Then what I would do is I would go to single view mode like I am now, and I tweak it from here. If it needs a little bit more noise reduction, I'll move the remove noise slider to the right. If I want to enhance sharpness a little more, I'll move that to the right. Uh, also, I'd come down here and move these two sliders as well. But I think right out of the box on auto that this is good. So I'm going to save it. So I'm going to click Save. And it says uh, denoise in the name here. So that's good. So I could use it to compare to the other ones. Now I'm going to save it 
and I'm going to save it to a specific directory. Uh, the reason being is I have my Lightroom set up so that it constantly looks at a specific folder on my computer and will automatically import images that are in that folder. So all I need to do is put this image in that folder and Lightroom will automatically import it into, um, into uh, Lightroom. So um, that, that way we could um, then compare them all to one another. That folder I have set up is called Auto Imports. I do have a Lightroom video demoing how to set up an auto import fol folder in Lightroom. Uh, you could look that up if you're interested in this. So we're going to put that in this auto imports folder and we're saving it as a Denoise AI raw file and click save. Okay, so now it's applying those um, settings to that image and it will save it to that folder. And the next time I open Lightroom up, Lightroom will just automatically import it. I won't have to do anything with it. So we are done with Denoise AI. Let's close that down. And let's do another one. Let's go to on one's no noise AI and we'll open that same exact raw file into it. So we'll go to the desktop, it's right there. Open it up. And this is a little simpler and easier to use than on one's or than Topaz Labs to noise AI. Uh, there aren't different models, it really just has a few sliders and the image and we could see that we have this split view so i could go and there's before after and you could see it's applying a it's also applying a um a lens correction to it as well um but it has when set to auto on like i have it has luminance noise reduction at 99 so that's like pretty much all the way up it has enhanced detail set at 50 color noise reduction at 100, and actually that does look pretty good. I could come in and maybe enhance detail a little more. Why don't we try and see what happens? Let's try like, we'll split it in half. It was at 50 and it could go up to 100, so let's put it around 75. And you could zoom in and out. It, I don't know, there's before, and there's after. Probably zoom in a little bit. There's before and there's after. You can see it actually did a pretty good job. Um, well, we had a little more sharpening, see if I get away with it. Uh, when you, what you need to be careful of is when you add sharpening here, like I'm doing, you could enhance the noise that is there and it will kind of bring back the noise that it got rid of. You don't want to do that. I like the, the detail here in the feathers around the neck. So I really like that, and I think this is good. So you can see that um, On One's No Noise AI is considerably easier to use than Topaz Labs Denoise AI, although Denoise AI gives you a lot of different AI models. Um, and those AI models uh, could come in handy down the road, right? So, um, all right, so we're not gonna save it as a PSD. I wanna save it as a DNG. Uh, so I'm gonna preserve the raw format. And again, I'm going to save this uh, to that auto imports folder right here. I don't have Lightroom open, so that image we did in Topaz Labs to Noise AI is still sitting here. But when I do open Lightroom, they'll all get imported at the same time. So here we're gonna change this to, we're gonna put no noise in here, just kind of the same way. So we could definitely know which is which. Okay. So we change the file name slightly and we'll click save. And now we'll save it there. And there, we're done with On One's No Noise AI. Now, um, finally, and it saves an On One file too. Uh, this is just so that you could go back in and re-edit things. So this needs to be with the original RAW file for you to go back in and re-edit anything. It doesn't have to be with the saved DNG file just with the original raw file. So I, I wanted to clarify that. This is equivalent to Adobe's .xmp file, the sidecar file that will be with a raw file when you export a raw file from like Lightroom or save um, a raw file from Camera Raw. You'll have an XMP sidecar file with it. The .xmp fi uh, file, if you did any edits to it in Lightroom or in Camera Raw, those edits are in here because 
Lightroom and Camera Raw are non-destructive. The same thing for on one applications, they're non-destructive. So if I edit this raw file in No Noise AI, it will include, after even you exported it by saving the DNG file, it will save this on one sidecar file with it uh, so that you could return and uh, re-edit anything that needs re-editing. So I'll just leave it there right now. It's not hurting anything. And finally, we'll get to DxO's Pure Raw 2. So we're going to add a raw file to process and we'll go to desktop and we'll go to that Nikon raw file and we'll open it up and it's right here and we're gonna click on it to see it. So we could see that there it is and we're gonna process it. So we'll click on process photos and then we have some uh, options. As far as raw processing, because it is a raw file, I am able to use Deep Prime, with, which is the best of the three different methods. Uh, if this was a TIFF, PSD, or JPEG, I would not be able to use Deep Prime. Uh, so the, be in, in order to compare all three of these applications to one another, I specifically wanted to use a raw file so that we could use the best noise reduction available in DxO's Pure Raw 2, and that is Deep Prime. Um, DxO optical corrections, and we're going to stay with that. We're going to output it again as a DNG. I want to keep that um, raw for format, you know, throughout the workflow. We're going to save it to a custom folder, and again, I'll save it to that auto imports folder, which is right here. All right. And you can see there's really no controls here, right? There's no sliders to move. There's nothing. You just pick what method you want to use as far as the noise reduction, whether or not you want to add optical lens corrections. We could do lens distortion correction as well. And whether or not you're saving it as a JPEG or a DNG and where you want to save it to. That's it. So we're going to process this one. So this of the three is the easiest to use. Uh, obviously, you just kind of load it in there and pick how you want to save it and where you want to save it to. And then you're done. Okay, uh, processing is done. Now, uh, go, we'll just close this down. And it's asking me if I could go to Finder and we could look at the folder it's in. I could view the results. We'll save that when we look at all three. Or I could export it another time. So we'll just close that down. We'll get rid of this. So we're done with Pure Raw 2. Now we need to compare them. Notice there's no sidecar file for that. All right, now we'll go open up Lightroom. And I have Lightroom set up, so I'm in that folder already. So it'll just take a second once it initializes. You'll see that this auto import photos will start repopulating. And it will, uh, you know, once it finds them, and it will show these three images. There's one. And there is the other two. Now, one thing I'm going to do uh, very quickly. I mean, uh, minimize that. Let me uh, put the original raw file in there as well. So we'll get that original raw file. We'll be able to compare them to the original raw file. And you'll see in a second, it will disappear out of this folder because it just got auto imported. Okay, let's organize these down in the film strip. The first one is the original raw file. The second one, the one right to the right, is the DxO's Pure Raw. The one to the right of that is the no noise uh, image. And the one to the right of that is the denoise AI image. Now, um, what we're gonna do is I'm going to zoom in. Let's go over the develop module. And I'm gonna hold the command key in on my Mac, control key on a PC, and we'll zoom in to this kind of part of the image, like right there, all right? So we could zoom in. There's the original raw file. There is uh, DxO's D prime version. It's pure raw too. And one thing I need to do is I need to go up to view and I got to lock my zoom position. Then we'll go to the one next to it, which is the no noise AI. You can see that one's a little more uh, dim. There was some more processing done in the D prime no noise or D prime. I'm sorry. D prime's uh, version of the image that is the pure raw or was that called? I'm losing track of what these called. Pure Raw 2, yeah, okay, there we go. Okay, back, this is the no noise one, and then next to that 
is the denoise AI. So you could see that there was really no tone processing done in denoise AI and no noise AI, but there was some tone processing done in the uh, deep prime version uh, of the image. So whether or not that's good or not, that's up to you. Of course, it because there was some tone processing done, it looks best of the three, just like that. But then as we zoom in, there is still a little bit of noise in the background. With the no noise version, there's no noise that I could see at all. And with the denoise image, there's no noise as well. Now, as far as sharpness is concerned, um, looks very sharp. This is the denoise version. The one next to that is the no noise version. That one is a little brighter and it, there, it looks very, very sharp. And the deep prime version is very sharp as well. So they're all very equal uh, in many ways. Um, let me try to zoom in even more. Okay, this is the deep prime version. All right, you see the noise I'm talking about? Now let's go to the no noise. And you can see there, there's still kind of a little more noise there. Not like it's different though. It's more kind of a pixelated noise compared to the um, deep prime version, the pure raw two version. And if we go over to denoise AI, there's really no noise at all. Maybe a little bit uh, down in here at this edge of the eagle's beak. But I mean, I am zoomed way in and we're really looking at it. The white feathers over here have some noise in the denoise version. The no noise version, there really is no noise on the feathers, but there is maybe like in that transition area similar to denoise AI. And Pure Raw 2 just has more noise in it generally, uh, but still acceptable. And it, it did do some tone, tone processing as well. So out of the box, it kind of looks best just because of that processing. Um, but of the three, I mean, they're all acceptable and all equal. And you're definitely going to process all three of them from this point forward anyway. So it doesn't matter that no noise and the noise didn't really do much with tone at all. One thing I have noticed in general, when I use no noise AI, the image tends to be brighter. Um, like there's the original raw file. So it will tend to be a little bit um, brighter than if I use the noise AI, uh, just comparing those two. To one another so this one tends to always be a little brighter no noise ai a little brighter than denoise ai uh, then um, as i mentioned the pure raw 2 deep prime versions tend to be a little more processed all the time and then again there is the original raw file so one more time there's the original raw file there's um pure raw 2 the deep prime version, there is no noise AI, and there is the noise AI. You could say it's six of, six of one, half a dozen of the other, as my father used to say. They're all very, very good. I mean, just five years ago, we didn't have this advanced noise reduction, so um, we now could shoot at extremely high ISOs and get away with it nowadays uh, because any one of these three applications do a great job. I will have links in the description below this video. All of them have fully working free trials. I do have discount codes for a couple of them, No Noise AI and De Noise AI. And I have a discount code for the Pure Raw 2, but it's not working from what I understand. And I've emailed them and they haven't answered me. So I guess it doesn't work. Um, so. That's it. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>